You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So the last place we left off, we found out that the elders were kind of snooping around, asking about Rannik and asking about Orion. Uh, trying to see if they can get some dirt on them, and then uh, Elrian went into the bedroom and is deciding whether he wants to uh, do physical things, horribly naughty physical things, so uh, I might have some stuff to edit out in this uh, video, so we shall see, but anyway guys, please sit back and enjoy, let me tell you for the next 20 minutes and let's, uh, 18 minutes and let's jump right in, gotta get used to that, okay, alright. What should we do? Try to fall asleep, let off some steam, try to fall asleep, let off some steam, oh, whoa, what's this? Notice is your bulge, no. I release a deep sigh and help you reach towards my underbelly. As my hand slides beneath the loincloth, I gasp, taking a deep inhale from the cloak. Tonight, I'll be thinking of my wolf. My dreams will be sweet, tender, and erotic. But above all, tonight we'll be together, even if just in my mind. Oh dear. Oh. Huh, I thought there'd be more to that. Okay, alrighty. I wake up with a long, satisfying yawn as if I had the best night's rest in my life. I dart my gaze to the floor, meeting with embarrassment the crumpled loincloth lying there. It's not like I haven't done anything like this before, but it still feels slightly, uh, awkward. Usually, I used to focus on some erotic fantasies, but here I am, hoping, simply hoping for one to come true. I mean, it's half his damn fault for ending me, for edging me like this, but considering our conversation, it doesn't feel right to fantasize about him. At least not while we don't know where we stand with each other. He is hot, though, I'll give him that, and he knows how to flaunt it. I pick up the improvised tissue and walk into the kitchen. I hang back the cloak and get some water into the bowl. Very much aware their sense of smell would pick up any irregularity, I wash myself thoroughly with the bar of soap. I definitely do not want to have that conversation. Especially not after Varissa's vivid description of their sex life. I also wash the loincloth of my shame, removing all evidence of my self-gratification. I slush the gist up water out the window and take a deep breath. At least something didn't change for me. The remorsefulness after a wank. It's a very familiar sensation, so it's not the first time I feel like this, that's for sure. But perhaps now I'll be able to keep my head straight. To my surprise, I am not visited in the morning, but I have enough nibbles around to scrounge up a decent breakfast. Mindful of what I was told the other night, I stay inside, impatiently observing the doors in hope that someone would come to visit. But hours pass, and I'm still alone. Uh-oh. My chin slides from its comfortable perch in the palm of my hand, and I am stirred back up. I blink the bright light of the early afternoon and look around. Still, no visitors. And this begins to worry me, as it means that, uh, that as it means that the elders are setting the entire village on edge. They're coming for you. I feel my heart sink, but only momentarily. Oh, got in my throat. <clears throat> if that were the case, if they indeed were about to arrest me or execute me, it's not like I would be able to do anything about it. Besides, there's no proof of this. I trust Varissa's plan. She's a fool. I promise to God I'll make a copy of that damn tattoo if only to shut you up. Good. It means you can listen. I take a deep sigh and look around the room. I've cleaned everything thrice over already. This house would be made Cinderella's stepmother stop her bitching. Not a speck of dirt to be found anywhere. I'm completely out of things to do, and as always, when I'm idle, the shadows come. The shadows become chatty. I'm not about to entertain this anymore. I simply grab the different books lying around the house and bring them to the table. There's five of them in total. The Tiger Rebellion, The Six Tribes of Tiernan, A Brief History of Freyfall, Avi's Guide to the Culinary Delights of Avalon. Huh, a cookbook of sorts? I flip through the pages, seeing recipes for a whole plethora of dishes. They seem to be organized by regions, and as I skim through, I notice that some pages are marked with a folded corner. I ruffle through the book until I arrive at such a spot to be greeted by the chapter's big lettering, Staples of Freyhall. Freyfall. Freyfall, more so than any other region of Tigeron, is infused with the dietary habits of humankind. The food here is robust and usually accompanied by a selection of root vegetables, steamed, boiled, or sautéed. In this chapter, you shall find all sorts of pastry, bread, and pie recipes, as well as a good assortment of stews and casseroles. As is my treatise on the heartland cuisine, you'll find, my dear reader, that humans and tigers have one other thing in common, their sweet tooth. So rest assured that your, that your selection of desserts will be mightily enriched by the end of this chapter. So Rannick used this to learn what to feed me. Huh. I smile, realizing how exciting this must have been for him. He, he found a creature none of his kin have ever seen before. 
I bet those were the very I bet those were the very few, if not the first books he actually read in his whole life. I'll get to <laughs> all to get to know me. It makes his appearance at the foot of my bed the very first night that much more understandable. I flip through the remaining pages, and true to her word, Avis describes various stews, pies, and even a few different bread variations. Page with a sourdough recipe is also marked with a fold. I can imagine him sitting there, going through the books late into the night, trying to understand how to accommodate me better, while taking curious glances at the bedroom door. I look back towards the bed, almost able to see myself lying there unconscious. My vision blurs as I'm getting slightly emotional, and I rub my eyes clear. I miss that damn wolf so much. I close the book, realizing it doesn't help me to exactly study myself. The last and the smallest of tomes is a booklet no bigger than a personal notebook, and it seems to be just that. Helmet Centuries and Curses. It seems to be some sort of a medical diary made by a doctor who described different diseases and injuries he encountered, leaving a detailed account of how to treat them. There's some wacky parts where the male describes various curses he battled with. I like the, unlike with the cookbook, this one doesn't have any marks, so it seems like it wasn't much of use to Rannick. I mean, I turned, out, uh, I turned out to not be injured. If I were ill, they wouldn't have known that unless I woke up. As for curses... I laugh at my own stupidity, but I decide to entertain a wild thought. I skim through various curses, trying to find any involving hearing voices, but it doesn't seem to be a serious treaty on the matter. Most curses described here are of the benign nature, like being cursed with bad luck or a curse of spoilage, which supposedly rots away all the food in the household within a day. Witchy, hacky nonsense. I toss the tome aside, pretty much losing my interest in it. So much for killing time. I dart my eyes back to the six tribes of Tiernan and decide to give it another skim. Not much of newfound info. Not much of newfound information, apart from the last page. At the very end, and missed by me, uh, missed by me on the first read, is a little map of the entire region. Huh. I gaze at it curiously, seeing different tribes noted on the parchment with their main settlements marked with a circled point. Arden, Gildiran, Lothian, Resselin. I guess this village is quite deep in the woods. I look towards the northern border of Gildiran. That's where the Vortig Vortigern wolf, wolf rules. If, if what Vol said is true, then and it took Rannick three days to get there, how big is this forest? How much distance can a person cover in a day? 20, 30 miles? I'm spitballing here, but if my estimate is anything near the correct answer, that would make the border almost 100 miles away. That can't be right, can it? I look back at the map and measure the width and length of the entire region. It's at least 10 times that, e that east to west and 6 times north to south. That's like 1,000 miles by 600. It would make this forest huge, at least by the size of a big country, which makes me even more confused about how I ended up here. I really can't recall being in the forest to begin with. In fact, the harder I think about it, the more I'm convinced that everything began in this cottage. <laughs> Waking up in that bed was the first lucid moment of my existence here, it, which means that whatever my life was before waking up here, it was out of this world. I don't belong here. Whatever brought me here wiped my mind clean of any memories, but there are echoes of, th echoes of things resonating in the void. I can feel it with every fiber of my being, but just as before the very idea of it filled me with dread, this time around I feel rather encouraged by the concept. This feels like an adventure very few were given a chance to undertake, and the choice being made for me, all I can really do is, re is revel in it. It does leave only one question. Why me? What's so special about me? Nothing. You are nothing. Takes one to know one. <laughs> I mean, it is rich coming from an ephemeral, 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 blah. My, my, my tongue is not doing anything. An ephemeral whisper. At this moment, you're basically a cosmic fart. You even linger around like one. <laughs> hmm, you don't like that, do you? I can sense its anger at being dismissed so easily. The two of us can play this game. You're just a pawn. And you're meant to be the player. I mean, manipulating my emotions might have worked if you were a tiny bit more subtle with it. But now I know there's something wrong with me. I know you're there, whoever you are. I mean, I might just be mad, but considering I'd rather stay on the hopeful side of things, I'll go along with you being real. Which means I'm possessed. I shrug. Normally, I would probably freak out at such a realization, but considering I've woken up to a bunch of werewolves, got stabbed, and now at be and now at best face or if, and now at best face a threat of war and an execution at worst. Condescending whispers are somewhat low on my list of worries. Damn. I guess Fool might have been right about the blood ritual. Whoever was scurrying about those woods in the dead of night was up to no good. I'm just wondering if I was the means of or, or the ends. Once Rannick returns, I'll have to get this properly discussed with the group. Heal. 
Yeah, yeah. I wave my hand dismissively. Save it for someone who cares, buddy. I'm seriously done with you for now. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, voice. <laughs> with the sun setting, I set up a fire and continue my vigil, but there's still no visit. The night grows darker and the shadows grow longer, forcing me to consider simply calling it a day. I am somewhat unsettled by being left alone, however. It's not like I'm without any provisions, so I can't complain. I just hope whatever the reason for Vul's and V's absence is, it doesn't bide more trouble for us. My stress levels are high enough as it is. Finally, completely defeated, I put out the fire, grab the cloak, and head to bed. Being bored oh excuse me, being bored out of my wits, it doesn't take long for me to drift off, especially snuggling into the crumpled excuse me, crumpled cloak. Oh dear. A knocking on the window wakes me up. I rub my eyes lazily, noticing that it's still night. I approach the sill, my numb fingers fiddling with a latch for a moment until I finally manage to unlock the window and open it ajar. To my surprise, I find Verissa standing outside between the lines and our, the lines of our laundry. I half expected Vol to repeat our first night's encounter. I hope everything's all right. I mutter, still rubbing my eyes. Well, yes and no. I draw a deep sigh of defeat. Of course, why did I expect anything else? The elders were wasting half of our day interrogating everyone, everyone about you and Rannick. And while the other half was wasted at the villa when the chief was summoned, when the chief summoned us to question about the elders. What a palaver. Yeah, whatever that means. So that's why you were away today? Yes, yeah, sorry about that. Both me and Vul were held up, and I didn't want to endanger Cora further. Endanger her? I blink, slightly confused. Didn't she tell you that she was also that she also was interrogated, mainly about the food and who's paying for it? Oh yeah, she did mention that. Well, Vithir doesn't like it one didn't like it one bit, so he forbade Cora from getting involved with you. Damn. I mumble, saddened by the news. I mean he's doing what any father would do, he's trying to protect her. I'm glad you choose to see it that way. And speaking of she slides a, fra a fragrant linen parcel onto the sill, and as an eye unfurl it, I find a quiche and a collection of fruit pastries. Is this from Vithir then? Nope, he's still at the villa. Then there's only one other person that could have made those, I state plainly, watching her smile. So much for not getting involved with me, eh? I chuckle, pulling off a piece of the quiche and stuffing it into my mouth. I'm not starved or anything, but it was going but I was going on throughout the day on just the nibbles. Cora is quite independent, and she took a liking to you. <laughs> the feeling's mutual. I smile, enjoying the deliciously moist quiche. This little gift immediately lifts my mood, and I see that but I see there's more to come as Varissa's practically beaming with a very impatient smirk. Hm. What? I've got some good news for you. Oh, I could use some. Rannick's coming back. I stop, gaping at her in disbelief. H how do you know? We heard it over the howl. The, the, the howl, or...? I know, it's a bit confusing. She brushes it off with a chuckle. Our actual howls convey short messages, and they can be heard over quite some distance, especially out in the open. Yeah, Rannick said something to that effect. I see her smirk intensify. Oh, he did more than just say it, didn't he? She lets the question hang for a moment. And quite a lot of us could hear his little demonstration. I blush slightly, reminded of our evening together. Yeah, I might have pushed him to it. Anyway, one of our outer sentries passed on a howl he overheard. Rannick's just a day away. He should be here around tomorrow evening. I cover my lips and jump up with joy like a little kid who just had his wish granted. Oh god, yes! I exclaim, causing the female to shush me. Sorry, sorry, just... I was so worried. I try to control the waterworks as my eyes begin to gloss. It's fine, just be happy, but quietly. So did he find the missing packs? Well, he only found one of them. What about the other? That's the mystery we'll have to solve tomorrow. Her voice slightly wavers. But the silver lining is that Brigera's pack is all accounted for, and considering their pace, it seems none of them are seriously injured. Yeah, that is a relief. Suck it, you fucking liar. Anyway, tomorrow is going to be quite busy. There's a lot of preparation to do. The chief wants to throw a proper feast to welcome the pack, but... She pauses, giving me a surprisingly comforting smile. Since you're Brannock's ward, your place will be at his side at the table, won't it? My expression lightens at her ex ex excited tone. I'm looking forward to that. Is there anything I can do to help? Not particularly, no. Am I under house arrest, then? I suppose not. She sounds hesitant. Aldris and Dran did their digging, so they're most likely out of your hair for a while. If you have some errands to run, feel free. Just, you know. Yeah, don't cuddle up to every wolf I meet. 
I laugh out. He can be taught! She jokes and is about to depart when a thought strikes me. Um, Verissa? Yes? I actually have a favor to ask of you. It's about Rannick. I was wondering if there's anything he likes to eat that he doesn't that he doesn't get to enjoy often at the feasts. Cheeky devil. She smiles, giving me one of her telling gazes. No, it's not like that. It's just he was working so hard to accommodate me here, spoiling me with food all this time. I, I just, you know, would like to do something meaningful to return the favor. <laughs> there's something that would make his heart melt. R really? I almost blurt out excitedly, and she smirks again in that teasing fashion. Come on, just tell me! Very well, Rannick has a sweet tooth. Always had. When we were pups, our den mother used to prepare pork with apples and mustard. Rannick couldn't have enough of it. Ever since, she had, ever since she joined the ancestors, I haven't seen the dish around. Not many of us like the fruit with their meat. Hmm, that sounds quite complicated. Not at all. It's a simple dish. I can give you the instructions. I frown in slight apprehension. If you know how to make it, could you, couldn't you help me? I thought the whole point of this was for you to do something meaningful for him. My involvement would make this moot, no? I guess you're right. I concede, but my expression still betrays reluctance. I'm sure you can manage a simple recipe. I mean, I can try, so how do I go about making this dish? It's all quite simple. You even, you even, make, it, you even make it in one skillet. She says with the confidence of a salesperson. First, you wedge one apple and fry it up a little in some butter until it's nice and golden and the juices create a glaze. But as with every sales pitch, there's an asterisk, asterisk which I immediately spot. It's spring. Where would I get an apple? Oh yeah, you're right. Her confidence wavers, but only for a moment, and the female snaps her fingers. I know. There should be some dried slices at the villa. They use them for punches and such. You could just soak them in water and then fry them up. Am I even allowed to go there? I don't see why not. She shrugs. Especially if you keep to the bunnies. I doubt anyone would even notice. Besides, you're Rannick's ward. If you're spotted, just say his name and you should be left alone. I mean, you are doing it for him anyway. Yeah, good point. I nod, actually confident that this could work. Despite the possible risk, I'd like to at least try. If just to do it for him. So, once I soak up and fry the apples, what then? Then you fry the pork in the glaze until it's golden brown. Once, you're, once that's done, you add a cup of broth, some sage, and a dollop of mustard. When it boils up a bit, you add back the apples and finish it up with a dash of cream and let it stew. As I said, it's all quite easy. I try to make a solid mental note of the recipe. Soak the apples, fry them in butter, remove the apples, fry the pork, add a cup of broth, some sage and mustard, then a dash of cream. Yeah, I think I can manage that. I finally nod in agreement. Really, Orion, if you can cook a stew and make some sausages, you can cook this. I have faith in you. I assume, I assume I could get all that at the villa. Yeah, they cook meat every day there, so there's always some broth around. Okay, thanks for your help. No problem. She smiles happily. It's a lovely idea. I'm sure Rannick will appreciate it. A perfect welcome home gesture. I'm glad you think so. Sweet dreams. The female waves and walks off. Sleep well when you do. I call out, shutting the window and returning to bed. Considering my impatience at seeing my wolf, I'm very happy to know I have most of the day organized. I guess I'll go to the villa straight in the morning to get all the ingredients ready. I'm sure Vul will be more than happy to give me some cuts for Rannick. Yep, tomorrow is going to be a great day. And with that thought, I snuggle into my blankie, taking last sniffs of my Rannick's substitute. Oh, perfect timing, okay. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Looks like we got a recipe to try out in the next episode. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye